and welcome to All of Amber's, a study of wands in the wizarding world. I'm Amber, and this first episode is an introductory into wand lore. This whole channel will be about wands from J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World that will include Harry Potter, Fantastic Beasts, and everything in between. So every episode I will select a character and their wand, and we will diagnose that wand based off of four characteristics. These characteristics are wood, core, length, and flexibility. Together, they make the overall personality of the wand. And each wand is unique and has their own personality with or without counting the Witch of Wizard. So for this study, I'll be looking into the cultural and symbolic meaning behind these traits and finding any links that correspond to the respective Witch or Wizard. We also don't just see wands in the wizarding world either. Ancient cultures have various depictions of those in power carrying a staff or a scepter or a wand. This was believed to show the, their levels of power, and over time it transferred into magical power. That could possibly be because various deities eventually showed their levels of power and they were often creating miracles and various forms of what could be referred to as magic. Homer actually wrote that Athena, Circe, and Hermes also used wands in the Iliad and the Odyssey. We also see wands in modern day and culture as well, in stories such as The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Wizard of Oz, and Disney, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Pinocchio, and there's probably many more that even I haven't considered. But as for the wizarding world, a wand maker is a person who makes wands for their community. The most often one that we know and talk about is Ollivander. That is this channel's namesake, and Ollivander is a family of witches and wizards who create wands. They are currently run by Garrick Ollivander, and they utilize 38 different types of wood and three magical core types. And they average in length from 9 inches to 15 inches, but shorter and longer have existed. And wand makers don't just pick up any chunk of wood and expect it to become a wand. No, they need a specific wand quality wood. And that's usually achieved best by bow truckles. Bow truckles, as seen in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, are intelligent, stick-like creatures. And we see in the films, as well as Harry's Magizoology class, that they have complex social lives. They can be aggressive if their home tree is threatened. They are able to pick locks, and a group of bow truckles is called a branch. But my favorite fact about them is that they only live in wand quality wood trees. But for now, I'm going to go through our stats and explain what they usually tell us about the wand itself. First, there's wood. Wand quality wood is what encases the magical core and directs it. That's what wands are meant for, after all. And in the series, they function as a conduit for the caster's magic. This means that it gathers, channels, and expresses what the caster is intending to do. That is very much a necessity for the Harry Potter series, especially in the beginning, because they are young 11-year-old witches and wizards. So their magic is often wild and loose. They need a way to direct and narrow it before they're fully trained. Wood is best for wands because due to the connection to nature and life over other properties and materials such as metal or plastic. The second stat is core. The core is uh, taken from a magical beast or creature, and Ollivander's strictly only uses three different types, phoenix feather, unicorn hair, and dragon heartstring. But theoretically, any magical creature's essence can be used as core. The reasoning behind the wand having to have a core made from a magical beast is simply like lighting a match. You have magic, and you have an object through which to direct it, but you need something to catch it, something to ignite it, something to, for it to latch onto and capture. 
length is the third statistic, and let me start by saying that it has very little to do with height or anything else. Ollivander can be quoted as saying in Pottermore that this is a crude measure and fails to take into account many other important considerations. Instead, he describes it as being more in tune with the owner's personality. Grandiose, dramatic, or flamboyant people are going to have longer wands, while those who are controlled, timid, or self-contained attract more condensed wands. This isn't saying that extroverts have long wands and introverts have short wands. No, it's more about your personality in a magical sense. So longer wands tend to favor more spacious, dramatic style of magic, Ollivander says, and shorter wands favor more elegant and refined spellcasting. Now, flexibility. This is the fourth trait, and it is the trickiest statistic to talk about. It doesn't have much meaning on its own, it's entirely based on the other three traits, and as well as the wand itself and the owner. In short, it's how likely is the wand to bend to others' will over the owner. In the situation of a fight, would the loser's wand then yield to the winner? Will someone be able to steal a wand and use it without any problems, or would the wand resist? and stay true to its original owner. So these are our four wand specs, and each episode will center around one wand, and we will dissect what we know about it, see if there's a good match for the respective witch and wizard, and for characteristics that we do not know, or characters that we don't know anything about their wand, we're going to try and figure it out, narrow it down, so it's a little bit of a guessing game as well as a study. And that's my lecture of wands lore. I hope some of you found this interesting and keep watching future videos. The next video will be coming out in two weeks and it's going to be about Harry Potter's wand. Because why not start off with the title character, right? And this episode is actually releasing on Harry's birthday. So happy birthday, Harry. If you want to learn more about wands, please follow the channel or find me on Instagram at olivambers.wands. That's olivambers, O-L-L-I-V-A-M-B-E-R dot wands. And I hope to see you next time.